Hey, good evening. It's 11 o'clock. A little uh, out of the ordinary for me. I'm usually uh, up early doing these videos. But I uh, was up early yesterday evening, or yesterday morning, and uh, I had a bunch of things to do. So I got a bunch done, but I went to bed early. And sure enough, I, I get woken up by fireworks. But I slept pretty good. Um, we're up to uh, page 583. We've come a long way. Um, the last exercise was uh, applying components to a divided surface. Now, um, if we take a look at Revit real quick, you'll see that indeed we uh, have created a pyramid curtain wall family pattern or a curtain wall pattern based family and applied that pattern based family to this uh, divided surface. Now, that goes for any of the other patterns that you can create utilizing nodes and uh, parameters and constraining uh, geometry to reference planes and then testing and flexing the, the, the model, the family model, and ensuring that the pattern that you create uh, is synonymous uh, with the pattern that you're planning to apply this family to uh, in your uh, divided surface. So um, that brings us to custom custom patterns. Now the pyramid, I guess you could say, is a custom pattern. Um, but it goes well beyond just uh, geometric primitives. Um, many repeating patterns, and um, they could be anything uh, that your imagination can come up with. So we're almost through um, creating complex curtain walls, and that's going to bring us to uh, modeling floors, ceilings, and roofs. So as we get more and more into the extended modeling techniques, I just want to remind myself just as I'm going to remind you, is as we go through these, you know that you're going to comprehend a certain percentage of this. Uh, and my goal in this instruction series is that you comprehend the user interface. And, and that's the biggest hurdle. Once you can learn to navigate yourself around the software, then you can get into um, reinforcing the fundamentals of uh, the geometry and how to convey uh, this articulation onto your projections or onto the perspective of somebody else's uh, projections. You, this is a team-based collaborative platform. So, again, no man is an island. No man is an island. So, let's just stop there. It's, it's 11 o'clock, 11.04. If you're following along, I want you to get your thinking caps on. Because we're going we're gonna to obviously have enough time to get through this, this text. And like I said before, we still have uh, the MEP portion. But I think the architectural fundamentals of the software is, uh, is a good place to start. Now, this Lecture Lab series... Um, the way I, I have it uh, broken up is that we'll, we'll discuss Revit architecture first. Now, in, that, in this hands-on course, students uh, use Revit architecture to learn about building information modeling and the tools for parametric building design and documentation. During this three-day course, students learn about the fundamental features of Revit architecture, modeling tools, annotation, and construction documentation. Doors open at 8.45, classes begin at 9 and end at 5, with two 15-minute breaks and, and a one-hour lunch. I may have bagels and coffee in the morning upon arrival, and a book and a certificate of completion will be included in this fee. So the objectives of the course, uh, the primary objective of this course is to teach students the concept of building information modeling and introduce the tools for parametric building design and documentation using Revit architecture. Uh, 
after completing this course, a student should be able to describe the benefits of building information modeling, use the fundamental features of other architecture, use the parametric 3D design tools to design projects, create detailing and drafting views, create construction documentation. Who should attend? This courseware is designed for new users of Revit architecture. Prerequisites. Before attending this course, a student should have a working knowledge of the following. Architectural design drafting or engineering principles. Microsoft Windows. Now the course outline. It's robust. Revit Architecture Basics, Exploring the User Interface, Navigating Throughout a Revit Project, Starting, Opening, and Saving a Revit Project, Editing Elements, Starting a Design, Creating and Modifying Levels, Working with Grids, The Basics of the Architectural, uh, The Basics of the Building Model, Adding Structural Columns, Adding and Modifying Walls, Creating Custom Wall Types, Adding and Modifying Doors and Windows, Developing the building model, creating curtain walls, creating and modifying floors, adding stairs and railings, adding and modifying ceilings, adding and modifying roofs, loading additional building components, adding and modifying component families, using dimensions and constraints, working with dimensions, applying and removing constraints, detailing and drafting, creating call-out views, working with text and tags, working with detail views, working with drafting views. Viewing the model, managing views, controlling object visibility, working with section and elevation views, creating and modifying 3D views, creating and uh, schedules, uh, creating and modifying schedules, creating rooms and room schedules, creating legends and keynotes, presenting the building model, creating new sheets, adding views to sheets, working with title blocks, printing drawing sheets and sheet sets, cre uh, template creation, Creating an RVT file, adding standards to the RVT file, saving and reusing the RVT file. <coughs> importing and exporting files, importing and uh, using non Revit files, exporting to external files, linking files, working with Revit architecture, linked files, monitor and coordinate linked projects, conceptual design. Working with mass shapes, converting mass shapes to building components, creating advanced components, creating and using in place families, creating and modifying parametric families, creating nested families, working with component groups, which is exactly where we are. Design and analysis, designing and phasing, using design options, checking and fixing interference conditions, Revit architectural work sharing, managing project sharing with work sets, managing work sets with and multiple users. Working with professionals, working with a civil engineer on site design, working with a structural engineer. Advanced rendering, creating realistic presentations, creating rendered interior scenes. So the list goes on and on and on, and, and this suggested course is a, a guideline. These topics and durations may be modified by the instructor based on the knowledge and skill of the course participants. So. Again, there's a method to my madness, and just like in math, it's cumulative. So we, we go through this in a, a, in a logical series of steps. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have to go back and practice. We, we do these exercises once, and then we move on. And if you're not applying them in the field, use it or lose it. You're going to have to uh, probably recollect how to do it because we're not we're not superhuman computers that can store all this information for a immediate recollection but the more you use the the, the, the platform the more you'll find it becomes uh, second nature and it becomes intuitive and indeed you will um, have all that memory available to you right at your fingertips but it doesn't come without practice that's why I insist that um, we remember it's the persistence of tools uh, that make this, these structures come to fruition. So creating custom patterns, get your thinking caps on. Get your thinking, thinking caps on. We have a lot to cover and it's, uh, it's going to come to fruition for you. It seems intimidating, all you AutoCAD users. Uh, 
But if uh, if you don't if you can't get this part of the workflow, um, at least within your perspective, you may lose sight of of what it is um, you're doing in coordination and, and where AutoCAD fits into the general scheme of things. Uh, the industry demands that uh, design and, and work collaboration in the cloud go this way. And, and I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. I, uh, I go with the flow. So on that note, I'm going to hold this video here and just uh, prepare a little bit for uh, limiting the size of pattern-based families and, and getting through the rest of creating complex curtain walls so that we can move on uh, to our next section, uh, floors, uh, roofs, and uh, ceilings, which, as you know, is going to bring us right back to, uh, uh, to the meat and potatoes of it. All right, so let's just hold that thought, and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes.